Welcome to You Bet Your Assets, Case for Drupal and Visual Audiovisual Media Presentation. And this was my original screen before I realized that they standard. My undergraduate work was in engineering and math, which led to a graduate degree in education, and I worked in higher ed for some time, after which I became an educational media producer and then discovered that HD TV standards uh, were developing. So I aligned myself with those for quite a while and worked in digital video and eventually repositories and digital uh, programming. And that led to Drupal about five years back in 2010. And that's why I mentioned open source productization. If there's a better term, I'm going to start using it. And I've been with Drupal since uh, 7 l Overview and terminology. Digital audiovisual media pres preservation is not DAMP, uh, not an acronym, and it's not DAMP. Maybe today it's DAMP. <laughs> it's not exclusively film or video. It could mean other assets, print media, who knows what, but my domain right now is mainly uh, digital audiovisual. And I like to say it's non trivial in terms of detail or scope, it's not a small project. And it's also not ideally standardized. And you will see that the role of standards comes into play soon enough. Digital audiovisual media preservation needs love. That's not an acronym, that's just, that's what it means. Uh, interdisciplinary attention and focus, leaner, meaner standards, and dog fooding. For example, the Society of American Archivists sounds impressive, doesn't it? A universal preservation format. And when I went to search for it, we got a 404. <laughs> so put your money where your mouth is, folks. Uh, that's just one of many. So these are my personal uh, uh, motivation points and pivots. Originally, it was to use Drupal to represent one of today's top standards in preservation. For various reasons, I branched away, and that will become apparent through the rest of this. The first step, really, was to switch gears and try to taxonomize this damp corpus, <laughs> which means, and you'll see again, it will show that there is a glut of different competing standards and practices and publications and entities having to do with preservation. And so I had to confront scope creep. And then I pondered, and this took some time. And then I collected insights, um, or I'd like to collect insights. This is a pivot. I would like to uh, collect insights to influence the Drupal project itself. I think that we stand to gain uh, best practices by looking at some of these other existing standards and existing initiatives. Remember, this is about assets. Here's some terminology. An asset would be defined as exploitable content. And I think we lose grasp of that when we talk about a content management system. Is the content worthy? In other words, does it have value either monetarily or sentimentally or instructive-based uh, content? Any of those criteria would probably meet, meet the requirements, but uh, this is my concern about content. Content equals essence plus metadata. Essence would be the raw image, footage, audio, whatever you are recording, in other words. And then metadata, which will become the prevailing theme here. You can't have content without the metadata. Otherwise, you wouldn't have a file name. You wouldn't have anything else other than the essence, which would make it completely uh, inaccessible. I'm using this definition of metadata, descriptive or contextual information which refers to or is associated with another object or resource. This usually takes the form of a structured set of elements which describe the information resource and assist in the identification, location, and retrieval of it by users while facilitating content and access management. I can't emphasize enough how much it means to see that they mention both structure and retrieval and management, all in that definition. I think this is one of the best ones going. 
Here's another one, though. Metadata is structured information that describes, explains, locates, or otherwise makes it easier to retrieve, use, or manage an information resource. Metadata is often called data about data or information about information. Now, this one happens to be from a standards organization itself. And part of my gripe is that there is no one accepted de facto definition of metadata. Now, digital preservation, again, it's a mouthful here. The series of managed activities necessary to ensure continued access to digital materials for as long as necessary. Digital preservation is defined very broadly and refers to all the actions required to maintain access to digital materials beyond the limits of media failure and technological change. Those materials may be records created during the day-to-day -day business of an organization, born digital materials created for a specific purpose, e.g. teaching resources, or the products of digitization projects. Now, again, digital preservation itself is very broadly defined, but in our case, it becomes apparent that it's all about the metadata. This is what I call a digital value cycle that becomes apparent. When we have essence plus metadata, that leads to our exploitable assets, which leads to the need for standards around those assets, which becomes um, the catalyst for preservation. And then you just repeat because one feeds the other. You can't have preservation without the original essence and metadata. And you can't have essence and metadata for long without preservation. So this is my own little uh, device that I'm using to show bare minimum logic of this uh, attempt. In other words, assets count on preservation. Preservation counts on assets. Good. Here we go. Remember this? Not trivial in terms of detail or scope. In other words, we have immense needs to cover all digital preservation aspects. And not ideally standardized. There's no bona fide solutions across different repositories. So already we're running into constraints from three minutes ago when I said that it wasn't trivial and that it wasn't ideally standardized. And when I say yet, yeah, they're, they're working on standard, so we'll get to that in a moment. Okay, preservation description information. This is a very popular term in the business. Here we go. We have access rights, authenticity, content, fixity, integrity, provenance, quality, and reference. Every single one of these eight terms has made it into the pending standard, which we'll see in a moment. Obviously, it has to do with the, um, I can't say integrity because that's one of the eight elements, but it has to do with the validity of your uh, assets. Without access rights specifically stated, you run into difficulty monetizing the content uh, and essence. The authenticity is important to know that if you're dealing with multiple copies, that it is not a fake, it is not a bootleg, any of those things. Uh, the content itself it speaks for itself. Fixity, integrity, and quality all run into each other, but it has to do, as I said, again, with the veracity of, of what you have. And then provenance as well. We have to be able to uh, trace it back and make sure that it is the original content if it's being reported to be that. And reference, again, self-explanatory. All these eight make their way into a standard. So it's not trivial. Here we go. Uh, and this is from uh, an excellent little paper that I had read. A standard is needed that defines the content and format of multimedia preservation description information in order to facilitate interoperability between preservation systems, ensure accurate understanding of the resources exchanges, and reduce the risk of corruption both in the exchange and, exchange and thereafter. So in other words, we have to preserve not only the assets, but the metadata, the preservation information about the assets. So again, we're already getting into another layer of complexity. And we haven't mentioned Drupal yet, but think about Drupal as I'm delving into this. Now, as I mentioned, it's part of a standard that's under development. You ready? The ISO IEC 
discussed standard 23,000, part 15, information technology multimedia application format, otherwise known as MPEG-A, part 15, multimedia preservation application format, commonly known as MPAI. What the heck? <laughs> so already we're, we're getting into a level of complexity and nuance that seems uh, at first glance overkill, but you'll see that it's necessary. Uh, not trivial again. So here's an example of a typical document from the ISO. And since this one is pending, unfortunately, I'm unable to share uh, the content publicly. But there are normative references that are mentioned within it, no less than 25 of them, and they are indispensable. So these are other standards that this is built on top of. So this is not the only game in town. Uh, as I said, it's under copyright control, so I can't really show you these 25 normative references, but they comprise other ISO, IEC standards, and external resources. And all, every one of them merits classification within an open schema, so that if this is under copyright control and isn't publicly accessible, at least we should know which standards it relies on and be able to access those in an open format. And again, think ahead for Drupal and how that can be accomplished with rights management, with uh, content types and all the rest. I think Drupal could be a viable uh, solution. Now here's some personal observations. Closed standards make even a simple taxonomy of this tricky. So-called normative references may or may not be open themselves. Standards need standards. It's as simple as that. Just like metadata about metadata. And standards need a unified data model and content type. This is what I've discussed with myself a few times and, and distilled it to the bare minimum. And here's a sidebar, taxonomies and stuff. Reality check. Are Drupal taxonomies the right tool for this use case? Um, in other words, I'm trying to taxonomize the damp corpus. Remember, Jeremy, you weren't here when I said that. We're calling it damp for digital audio, visual media preservation. Well, to use a Drupal taxonomy is one thing, but I discovered that mind mapping is the minimal or minimum viable diagram. Um, it, because the, um, you have assignable progeny of standards and other resources. All the descendants of those particular standards or groups or whatever can be graphically denoted in a mind map trivially, very simple to do. It offers its own, if simplistic, uh, metadata provisions. So you'll see that in a moment. But unfortunately, a mind map is static and it has no semantic data. So here's an example of an application that I use online for free called Mind42. And you can see in the center of it, it has the mind map, which looks like a little bit of a, a binary network, starting on the right where it says mind42.com in that uh, rectangle. It moves to the left with features and then it splits into three. And then that splits off into its own little uh, descendants. So there's your mind map, and you can see a bird's eye view of it, just to the upper right of it. And all those icons are the so-called metadata. So you can assign your own symbolic or text metadata to each one of these. And you can see one of them where it says icons has lightning bolt, which means something, and it also has um, a document. So here's an example of Mind42 in action with my own mind map of all of these different standards uh, in play. So see what I did? The, the, center, the central stalk on the left side of the upper portion has all sorts of branches, and each one designates its own uh, standard. And I've used the badge, which is in yellow, to signify that it's a standard or a pending standard. And the check mark is just that it stands out, that it's one of the more popular ones. And as you can see on the upper frame as well, I've highlighted the one right there, ISO slash IEC, under, under discussion, et cetera, et cetera. That's the one that we just visited a moment ago. It's part 15 of many parts. It could be up to 20 or more parts. And then you can see on the left, the MPEG-A standard uh, initially launched in 2007. So this is sort of a chronological view of just the standards that I've accumulated by my own research. 
and already it's becoming quite a bit short. And oh, on the bottom, that's what I did. I highlighted so you can read it. Any questions so far? Uh, yeah. Why are they closed standards right now? Like, a, why is it like open, like, you know, you do all this work and then you, you publish it and say, well, let's see this happen, and this is what, because you put all this work into it. Right. Why, the question is, why are they closed standards? Well, initially, some of these organizations make money off of selling the final document. So they can be closed not only for copyright control, but also because it's under discussion and hasn't been um, elevated to the status of a standard. It's still uh, mutable. So if that answers your question, there's, some of them are open standards, some of them are not. Now, what if we had more of an in-house solution using Drupal? Graphline is or was a Drupal-based hierarchy with GUI. Unfortunately, the last commit was two years ago. And they're looking for a co-maintainer, and there's no Drupal 8 development. So this is the closest I could find to something like the mind map we just saw. And as you can see, there it is from 2009. And here's an example. It looks pretty robust, similar to mind map, uh, or mind 4.2. But as I say, it's, it's out of commission as far as Drupal. There's no way the Drupal 8. So more observations. A Mind 4.2 like map uh, via Drupal seems out of reach. An optimal inventory would be semantic, dynamic, and open. When you think about it, I would have to be updating this 24-7 with newly researched info. Why not get it straight from the source if they embedded their own sem uh, semantic data within their own links and I could pull that down from the author's page, it would be ideal. Uh, crowdsource could help speed up the input. And finally, uh, scope creep sets in again, the sheer number of DAMP-related players and initiatives out in the wild. And when I say DAMP, that, again, that just means digital audio media or audiovisual media preservation, which isn't a standard. <laughs> it's just my own acronym. Part three, dis digital preservation organizations and bodies. Now, this, is, this gets complex fast. <laughs> Here's another mind map, and this is just a slice of it. Bots. This map is only a work in progress. I keep adding to it. Uh, there are 45 groups so far. A few of them collaborate, but most are peculiarly independent. It almost seems as though not one group realizes that all the rest of them exist. And I, I perceive that as a problem. Um, and then there is overlap. There are groups working on extremely similar cases. And here's another example of my map I made, a uh, close-up of it. So the blue icons denote that it's a Drupal site. And there are more above and below this. I just couldn't fit it all on the screen. So Presto Center is one. Society of American Archivists is another. They've been around since 36. Some of these I don't have metadata on. Obviously, I don't know what year they were formed. Uh, I could probably call them up and find out. Uh, a few others. Sympathy, uh, which I am a member of. And Digital Curation Exchange. So I call it Acronymia Nervosa. It's just, it's getting, <laughs> it's getting ridiculous, folks. There, uh, we need a better way of um, identifying these entities. Okay, key players. You ready? Here we go. AMWA, ANSI, CCSDS, which is interesting because it was for space data. It was collected by satellite or rover or whatever and they became one of the major players. Duraspace, as I mentioned, Duraspace is Drupal. They are headquartered, I believe, in Ithaca. And the EBU, very popular European broadcast. There's more. The IEC, as we've heard, the ISO, as we've heard, the ITU, and the LOC. So this is not a wrap to Oh, and then MPEG again. It's a Drupal site. And finally, another page, MISO, Presto Center, which is a European Drupal site, uh, SEMPTI, which is a US Drupal site, uh, W3C, we all know. So what are my observations? Those who appear to have their shit together have Drupal sites. Is that a coincidence? I don't think so. Remember, leaner, meaner standards. I have a feeling that those who uh, have already decided to go with Drupal realize that standards are important and they stand out. An honorable mention, even though it is not a standards group, 
watch this. It's called Artifactual Systems. Here's their uh, homepage with a um, revolver on it. Free and open source standards compliant software solutions. Digital preservation, archival description, discovery and access. This, this is hitting every single key point anyone could want. And they're moving on it. It's open source. What could be better? And here's another one of their pages. We believe the open source model is the best way for archives, libraries, and museums to reduce costs, facilitate collaboration, improve standards adoption, and raise professional competitiveness. They're preaching to the choir. So I would like to start working with them in some capacity, even though they're not Drupal. Okay, documents, recommendations, and standards. This is very similar to the uh, organization of bodies that we just covered. It's just a different part of my mind map. Here we go. Again, it gets so complex. It's also a work in progress. It demands a more modern solution than this. Uh, what about dynamic graphs? What about data visualization? What about something else? And it's still a game with a bunch of unwieldy. Why has nobody tried to do this? There must be a list somewhere, whether Gardner or somebody has put it together of all these different entities. If not, then I can't believe I'm the only one. It doesn't make sense. And here's a close up of that list. So here are a few of the guidelines, frameworks, standards, um, data models, different criteria. Uh, trustworthy digital archives is another buzzword. SMPT has a VC2 standard for compression that came out in 2012. All these facts should be accessible in order to create better value for digital preservation. But we don't have a means of coordinating it. There's no uh, central nervous system in terms of Drupal that can handle it yet. So acronyms again now enrich with exacting link. They're very subtle differences in the standard. Okay, here are a few sample uh, metadata entries. So MPEG-21, MPEG-7, OAIS, this is a reference uh, model that again came from the Space uh, Systems Center. A metadata framework, which becomes important. Uh, and the OCLC is a library committee that only goes by its acronym. It doesn't even, you can't even find its own name anymore. <laughs> they, it's just too long. Uh, the German one here with Elmer and Premise again. The Library of Commerce, or Library of Congress rather, has uh, Premise, which seems to be one of the going standards today, especially in libraries. And then a little bit of character churn here. Um, oh yeah, the MPAF uh, MPEG-A format for uh, media, multimedia preservation, as we've seen before. That shows up on the list. So observations, acronyms do become useful after all because there are so many subtleties, you have to know the difference between all of these. Here we go, MPEG-21, MPEG-7, OAIS, Premise, Mets, MPEG-A, and MPAF. All of these, including uh, MPAF, uh, are in continual use. So the metadata standards need their own metadata. There's no doubt that, that Drupal can come into play. An ideal world would have a standard for abstracts too, just to know which what is behind each one of these uh, standards. Whoa, hello, what's this? The idea's been around. It's a guideline for abstracts. There is a standard out there for writing abstracts, and look, it has its own abstract. <laughs> <laughs> Drupal could be using this. So every single project page, every single uh, you know theme, everything could have its own little abstract with it uh, if we wanted to, and there are standards for it. That's just one of the spin-off ideas that I had, but the idea is that we don't need to uh, incessantly reinvent the wheel when people have standardized, even if it's interdisciplinary, this may be for library or you know academia or whatever, it could have a different uh, ownership, but we still can incorporate some of these best practices uh, for our own uh, in-house use. So this is from uh, NISO.org, which is also, again, very prominent in the standards field. Okay, we're getting to the meat of this, uh, and it's a meeting presentation. The role of Drupal in the future. So let's see what we have. What if Drupal did go beyond an inventory or a di diagramming tool, like our Mind 4 tool now? What would that look like? How about a harmonization engine? Ever heard of that term, harmonization? Or a crosswalk management system, another CMS? Um, I'd like to 
and solve this one. Issues and Crosswalking Metadata Standards. It's a great little document. Here it is. It's from 1998. Okay, so that precedes Drupal. Crosswalk basically means mapping. When you have metadata, it could have different vocabularies depending on which institution you are or which end use you're, you're intending it for. Therefore, what happens when somebody deaccesses a collection in a library or when someone wants to purchase uh, assets or transfer them in any way or transfer them to a new storage medium? All the metadata in the source and the destination has to match up somehow. So, Crosswalk is, sim is the simple terminology for mapping the old metadata to the new one. Oh, there we go. Harmonization. So harmonization means combining the metadata. If you have two different versions of metadata, why not combine the best of both worlds into one cohesive unit? So crosswalk would mean transferring or mapping. Uh, and it, I guess you could say it's almost like a field uh, manipulation, a field model. Whereas harmonization would be combining them into one body that could be uh, exploited down the road. It would be uh, all-inclusive. So these are two of the different uh, strategies in, in, in use all the time for metadata. The problem is, and you'll see in a minute, there's not just one metadata standard. Uh, but first, here's a good document called Understanding Metadata, obviously. Metadata is key to ensuring that resources will survive and can continue to be accessible into the future. So this is from 2001. Again, it's sort of the vintage of Drupal, and all of this has already been discussed ad nauseum. Yet, it's, it appears that it has still not reached a standard. Remember that uh, MPAF, it's still a pending standard. So, here we go. When I said there were metadata standards, I wasn't kidding. Look at this. Just a few. And this is from 2010, so there may be more now. If anyone wants to consult it, the link is in there. So you can see there's obviously a need for a way of corralling all of these different competing standards or complementary standards. So Drupal's role. How about this? Why not have Drupal serve as a manifold that aggregates or manages this zoo of standards? Sounds good to me. Uh, remember this, how I mentioned? My original motivation, zero, was to use Drupal to represent one of today's top standards. I'm not going to tell you which one of those standards it was or whether it was a different one. That's not important. But I wanted to incorporate the logic and the terminology and all the different nuances of that particular standard within Drupal itself so that I could make it a distribution. That way, anyone could get an open source version of that standard implemented, um, it, would, it would be a perfect uh, representation. That would be the technical term for it. Drupal would be the representation of that standard, that embodiment of it. So how about Drupal's role? What if we step back and instead of managing that, we only manage the metadata? That's the only concern that we would have. That, that could be one of the potential use cases. Or if we stepped it up, we could say, what about handling the metadata plus the content? Imagine that. Not only would Drupal be central in managing the metadata, but the content itself could become just another content type, which would require immense storage. But if you had a motion picture archive, imagine using Drupal as the central means of, of organizing and accessing and preserving all of that information according to the metadata uh, preservation standards. So again, more of Drupal's role. Uh, some might call these edge cases for Drupal, and I just had a conversation last night with a librarian uh, expert, and he said people dismiss Drupal. Why? Well, it's it may not be performant enough. You may find a, a more elegant, slicker solution uh, under the hood. But in my case, I, I'm saying not necessarily. It's not necessarily an edge case because Drupal 8 is going progressively more standardized. Uh, for instance, we have uh, the WAI Area uh, Accessibility Standard 1.0. It's a completed, rec they call it a recommendation, the W3C, but it's technically a standard in their eyes. Uh, the same goes for HTML5, uh, on the front of that, with Drupal 8, considered a standard. So we're definitely going in the right direction compared to any of the previous releases. 
more of Drupal's role. As I said, performance may not spec up to other open source projects. And here are some examples. Blacklight is a discovery platform framework, which is Ruby on Rails. Uh, Hydra in a Box is a turnkey repository of discovery, interoperability, and reuse built on Fedora. And this is not the Fedora that we know from Linux. This is a previous Fedora from one of those other organizations that has to do with um, uh, storage of multimedia. And Solar and Blacklight again. So Hydra in a Box is not yet out, but there was, I believe it was a $2 million grant recently um, completed to advance the cause. And finally, Islandora, which is a digital asset management and discovery solution based on Drupal, and then enhanced with uh, the Java and Python. So Fedora itself uh, would be the Java and Python, but the notion that these are all open source should put us on warning that if we want to do something, we, we would have to be up against these uh, competitive products that are already established in the market. All right, here's some else, uh, some other information uh, about Drupal 8. It no longer uses RDF mappings from anything but schema.org. You guys are probably aware of that. Uh, is that an issue? Well, it does promote the, uh, the notion of a unified shared vocabulary, which I think is a good thing. It, it gets rid of um, a lot of those contentious issues that we had before with the zoo of standards for metadata. Uh, so is it a problem or an opportunity? I don't know. Uh, there is a project you may have heard about called RDF UI, a user interface, that can map fields and content types to schema.org from within Drupal. And did you know that, here it is, it was a Google Summer of Code project by an undergraduate now, I think she was still in high school, her name is uh, Sachin Hara, and that's her page. So if anyone is interested, she also has another one that can automatically generate content based on um, those parameters. So I guess it works in both directions, but to think that we can have a user interface uh, written by a, a high schooler is inspiring to say the least. So think about the role that this could have in uh, the standardization of the metadata um, competing standards that I mentioned, or the vocabulary is we could do some of that harmonization and a crosswalk between all of them by means of Drupal, since this is already essentially doing that. It's mapping the metadata uh, through the fields. It's right here. It's for Drupal 8 exclusively. And I guess it has, where does it say? Uh, this module enables you to specify mappings between content types and fields with types and properties of schema.org, respectively. So this is a really useful little idea, and I think it could take off if we uh, exploit it right. I think it's a version that works in 7.2. Not according to this. Oh, Because uh, this just came out last year. I installed something very similar. Well, that's great. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. I'll look it up. Uh, oh, yeah, I'll look it up. Okay. But yeah, this was, like I said, it was uh, a student in Summer of Code, which kind of harks back to Angie Byron getting her start. Anyway, uh, more observations. Finding a place for Drupal will take effort, uh, but it will lock in longevity. Imagine if we cemented ourselves as a community into the space program, or into the Library of Congress, or into any of these other entities that aren't already using Drupal as their web presence. I think it could perpetuate Drupal in a very solid manner. And I don't know if Dries or any of the board is, is on board with it, but I, as an end user, I don't see why they could. It seems to me like it's a, a, a definite opportunity. But who will advocate it? I don't know. Is it worth it? Is it worth advocating on the developer level, or do we need to get an Aquia involved, or what do we need? And here are some other unspoken considerations that came up to my, in my mind when I was doing this. What about Creative Commons? Um, I never hear the notion of standards being released with Creative Commons parameters. It seems as though it's a match made in heaven, and it would, it would be something to investigate. Maybe it's already done, but I haven't seen it. And then also YouTube. This is probably the biggest digital repository out there, and you never hear anything about standards. You never hear anything about metadata. You don't know which vocabularies they may or may not be using. I don't know if it's proprietary. So all of these are good questions uh, to cultivate down the line. This is all brand new research for me. This all just happened in the past few weeks. So I'm spitting out basically everything that I've accumulated, uh, like a bird. But anyway, the, the Drupal community can take cues from certain initiatives, as I mentioned. To me, it seems as though even just standardizing the notion of an abstract 
or standardizing the metadata vocabularies for our own projects could get us way ahead of the competition, way ahead of the rest of the, the web um, in, in terms of being able to document. So that if all of our semantically rich um, descriptions were embedded already in every project, in every theme, in every distribution, then all that data could be pulled from the horse's mouth, so to speak. It would be sucked down and populate all the different documentation on the web, all the different resources, so that everything is always current, dynamic, up to date, thanks to the semantic uh, you know, shared data, the linked data. And I think Drupal, since it already has that part and parcel of its underpinnings, why not start using it for something like this? So I, I think we could follow the standards, and maybe they can follow us too. Uh, and this is the last bit, uh, spin-off potential. Did this induce any ideas among you? And is anything here wrong? Is anything here incomplete? This is just an overhead view, and I committed myself to following the, the, the item description in, you know, in the schedule. Um, so that's the last point I had to make. I'll open the floor and see if anyone has any contributions, especially if you're in the library realm or in any of the preservation um, fields. But that's it. Thank you. I know that uh, there was a case study on Islandora on Google that uh, somebody just did, and I can't remember which company, but uh, they use Islandora as the back end for archiving um, information because they said that was pretty much getting close to being like a, a good uh, standard to follow, so, you know, to, uh, when it comes to archiving. And they used the Baseball Hall of Fame. Yeah, I got, I got it right here. Okay. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, it was uh, a company called COGAPP, C O G A P P. I believe it's on England. Pretty sure of that. Uh, they did baseballhall.org. They did um, uh, uh, the Qatar uh, Digital Library online using the same thing. And I believe one other. Uh, but again, this is all pretty semi exhaustive research to try to find any link I could between. However you say it, Islandora is the door. It, it's a Drupal initiative. It's based on Drupal to try to find any links between Drupal and digital preservation. And they're few and far between. I think we've conquered most of them between uh, Presto Center in Europe, which has a pretty decent established um, sense in, in, in that picture. And what else? There were a few other ones that I mentioned on there. Um, the ones uh, from DuraSpace, which is based uh, outside of Cornell. University. Drupal is, is part of their web presence, but I don't think it's part and parcel of their strategy. And for reasons that I mentioned, it may not be performant. It may require like a solar uh, infrastructure that, that's much faster. When you have all that data and you're needing to access it so quickly, uh, Drupal may choke. So that may be a, a valid consideration. But I'll look into the Baseball Hall of Fame and see if, if their performance needs are being met by Drupal and if they have any concerns about it. That's a great idea. And thanks for sourcing that, um, Jeremy. I appreciate it. Yeah, they use, they use that as their back end. Right. And then they have another Drupal site that was pulling from that archive. And they said they were trying to implement best practices. I, I don't know, maybe they're, like you said, they show them here. They're, they're, they might not be, they don't know if there is no standard. There isn't no standard. I'm not sure if there is one uh, for that particular use case, but again, it almost needs the community's voice to bring that up and, and create a forum for it. Because with all of its um, features that they've been hitting on between the serialization of, of, of the, the data and, and who knows what, the services, all those different selling points in Drupal would be great to have a use case associated with them that has a standard backing it. You know, not some arbitrary little lottery site or something like that. We, we, we want something that, that's, that's really going to hit it out of the park. And I think we're halfway there. I think that uh, between some of the established ones and these emerging standards, if we could lock in and match our content types to all of these different uh, metadata data fields or whatever it takes, I think we could secure ourselves a future. That's just my, my hunch. Uh, you spoke in, in anybody at schema.org about 
creating a, a schema for digital assets because that's something that even Google is, you know, sort of pushing people for is to have structured data. And so, but in order to have structured data, you need a schema for it. So, uh, but you know, there's lots of reasons why people don't want them because they want to have their own proprietary repository of information. But that's exactly the crisis that we're running into. And to have an ability to both harmonize and crosswalk between different standards is essential. Otherwise, we're going to have that sheet of, you know, 100 or 200 different items. So, I think schema. I haven't contacted schema.org yet, which is obviously it's a it's a conglomerate. It has a consortium of uh, what Drupal, Yahoo, and who else? Oh, Microsoft's part. Yeah, but, different. Yeah, that, but I, I just don't know if having that unified vocabulary is the I ideal solution since there's so many existing metadata vocabularies out there. Having a way of bridging them, and as I said, if Drupal were used as a manifold, it could bring in or ship out any variant of any metadata standard so easily. These are just these are simple data models that we could construct and then have it dynamically updated if they change. You, know, you could always um, port out a new version of it on the fly. I just think that nobody's ever implemented that, let alone made a list of all the different metadata standards that are out there, except for that one that's three years old. I don't know if anyone's done anything since. There's a color version of that chart, too. Remember that one that I showed that? Mm -hmm. It had, you know, oh, I have it right here. Here, it's, it's, it says glossary of metadata standards. The print was so small, my laser printer was, was choking on it. <laughs> it almost crashed because there are so many tiny different entries on this list. And it's in there. I, it, the notes uh, slides are in there, and, and there's a link to it. But I just think that we, we have metadata, uh, what do I call it? Nervosa or something? And mm -hmm. I, just, I made up a term, uh, or ac acronym. <laughs> yeah. It's almost to the point where there are too many cooks in the kitchen, and we need somebody to clear it through and do this sort of schema.org method that would consolidate and improve the system, but I'm not sure if schema.org is sufficient. I don't know if it itself will be uh, luminous enough you know, to contain all of the subsidiary ones. Well, it, it may not be, but I really like the idea that if schema or you know anybody like that had a, came up with a standard for you know a particular type of uh, entity or whatever, that uh, that way you know if you if you're getting information on from the internet, you don't have to go anywhere. And you can just when you receive it, it's going to be just like in, however you want to have it. In, you know, it's like a like a good example is like recipes. Mm -hmm. You know, you have a name, you have the ingredients, and you have how to bake it. And everyone has, who has a recipe card, it's universal. And so the same with any other kind of digital uh, information should be that could be that same way, so that. You always receive the information the same way. So if you just want to look up uh, you know, fishing recipes or fish recipes, you can do it. it doesn't matter what site you go to, because it, it'll all be standardized. Just, uh, the way it is now, you, you just you have to guess. But there's no structure to content really, like in that in that fashion. Yeah, you know, another one is uh, is, is, is research documents. And, that's kind of my area that they are trying to develop schemas for. It's so that if, if a, a scientist publishes something, that as if you're looking for that information, you shouldn't have to search in the page. You just be able to search in the menu or from a computer or something. That will just go out and get it all. Now, I've heard I've heard of an initiative similar to that. So stay tuned. Well. I know Harvard is working on it too. It's, uh, the system that they're trying to introduce is it's it's you know it's pay as you go kind of thing, and that's not what uh, you know it's not universal. It's proprietary. Anything else, folks? Can you um, oh. can you? Describe um, a kind of a 
scenario of the future, like where all of this, let's say it exists, what a user would do with it? Who's going to use it and what would they do with it? That's an excellent question. In the future, what sort of user would use it and what would they do with it? I think it's, it's nebulous for now, but I'm sure there will be uh, massive educational times and um, monetization of, of old content that we didn't know existed, simply because there was never any metadata with it. Um, almost like finding, I'm not going to compare it to finding you know, another Kennedy assassination reel, <laughs> But along those lines, there may be content out there that's never been associated with any other content because there's no metadata there. Or the metadata is insufficient, or it's in a different format. And I, I think that there's just going to be more of a harmonization, as I mentioned, in, in the lingo that they use, to combine all the metadata from all these various standards or all these various vocabularies into a cohesive way of, of searching. And I don't know, I don't know if Google is, is really ambitious enough to do that. But, well, I mean, they're indicating that that's what they want to do. Right, right, but I mean... Because they, because they're going to give you points to have structure, have structure down. No, I know that, and there's something called rich snippets, and that's what I hinted to before. If Drupal itself were to incorporate uh, semantic data within, and it's already associated, because every content type is, corresponds to another, what is it, the resource, all those different things are mapped within Drupal 8 such that as soon as you set up your normal data structure within Drupal 8, it's automatically tied in to, and ready to be serialized and put out on the web. Um, Google Rich Snippets will pull that and, and even without any re special request, will post that information right there in your search results. So that's not anything earth-shatteringly new, however, the implementation of it is what's lagging. So it's sort of the same thing with this. We, we have a lot of this data, we have a lot of standards, and we even have ways of crawling the web or spidering it to find other things. I mean, there's, there, are, there are projects in here that will go through and determine whether it's the footage is, is, is legitimate. Remember those eight different criteria for whether it was authentic, whether it was quality, et cetera. All those things, like if, it, if there's like a video dropout from a VHS tape, it will notice that. And there is, I, I have a data sheet here that, that talks about that. It will, the, the metadata will represent it down to that granular level to say, hey, this is not the cleanest copy of this content. But there may be a cleaner copy in some other repository somewhere else that never, no one ever knew existed because it's, it's under a proprietary silo. No one knows that it's there. So I just have a feeling that it's a bigger project than, than just one concern we can take on. But if Drupal were there, since Drupal is so scalable, it could unify all those separate concerns and at least have a network, um, for lack of a better word. Well, which snippet is exactly what I referred to? Right. Meaning structured data, so the good is basically the same, but I totally agree that, I mean, it could be phenomenal if, if uh, sites have that. Yeah, and the fact that Drupal 8 is only uh, outputting scheme.org now, it's no vocabulary, really. Um, there, there are ways of overriding that, I'm sure, but I, I think I think the foundation is in place already, and we just have to find a house to build on.